Hello everybody. I hope you are having a fantastic day. I have said it several times on the channel, but this is absolutely one of my favorite purchases over the past year. For the uninitiated, this is the XT IDE, and this is one that I got from Blue Lava Systems. And uh, what it does is it allows you to put a compact flash or standard IDE drive into basically any kind of oldish computer. And as you can see by the fingers, I have used it a lot. And some of you may be asking yourself, why in the world would you want to do that? And the reason is when you're working on these old computers, you want to make sure that you have something that works. Now, old computers had things like this and this, and this. And uh, they suffered from a few issues. One, extremely unreliable today. Um, they're real reliable back in the day, but by 2022, um, most of these things are dead. They are loud and they use a lot of power. And beyond that, these are 20 megabytes. Not 20 gigabytes, 20 megabytes. And so uh, these things, their time is quickly passing them by. And so if we wanna keep these old computers alive, we need some more modern options. And that is where the XT IDE comes in. It allows you to hook up, again, normal IDE drives or compact flash drives or SD cards or something like that to more modern computers. But these things come in a lot of form factors. Now. The only problem with this is that one is not enough. As you can see, I've been taking this thing from computer to computer to computer, and uh, I need more. So these things come in lots of different form factors. Uh, you've got this one, you've got this tiny uh, cheapy one here, you've got this one that I made for the Tandy. There's just all different versions of them. They, they say there's four revisions of them, but I mean, inside of those revisions, there's lots of other revisions. Um, now, what these have in common is that these require SMD soldering, which again, I can do. I've done a toaster oven video, uh, but as you look at stuff like that compact flash card right there, or you look at these tiny chips and even the ones that are kind of buried under here, um, this is not for the faint at heart. And uh, you need to, to have a steady hand or pick in place or something like that to do something like this. And so what I have been searching for is the ultimate DIY version of the XT IDE. And I think I found it. This is the XT IDE Rev 4 by Glitchworks. And you can see I put a couple of components on this one. Um, and this one uses 100% through hole components. Now, again, all of these have pros and cons and we'll get into that as we go on. But my sponsor, PCBWay.com, sent me 10 of these. And you know, you can order 10 of them. I think they wind up being like 30 or 40 bucks shipped to your door. And all of a sudden they become a lot more affordable. This one, is uh, like 55 or $60, but I was able to get 10 of these for I think $40 from PCBWay.com and I bought enough parts to build up all 10 of them for $100. So for uh, I can either buy uh, three of them for $150 or I can have 10 of them for $150 thanks to PCBWay.com. Now I can't stress enough that there are so many revisions to this board that uh, it can be difficult to get the right one. So what I decided to do was to take the open source project and put it on pcbway.com as a shared project. So if you go to the link in the description, you can click the button and you can go there and you can get this exact board directly. Now I will say that I ordered these boards in hard gold and in fact the PCBWA people asked me if I really wanted to do that and I said yes because it does make these pins a little bit stronger but um, in hindsight I don't think I would do that. I would actually get the cheaper version just get them tinned and, uh, and call it a day because the gold is a little bit harder to solder to so you can actually save a little bit of money and make your life a little bit easier. One of the coolest things about having so many of these things is that it gave me the ability to experiment. For instance, like the one I'm building over here, uh, I decided to socket all the chips. I bought all these chips off AliExpress and I wanted to do some diagnostics and see how they're holding up long term. And so I decided to socket this. Now I didn't want to spend the money on socketing all of them, but because I had a bunch of them, I could choose to socket this one and use this for experimentation. You'll notice that there's a place for some jumpers up here for compatibility mode and high speed mode. And once I figured out that I basically never needed compatibility mode, I decided to do a couple of them with these jumpers just hard soldered over here so I didn't have to worry about uh, adding some extra pins and stuff. 
I had the brilliant idea that maybe I could leave the dip switches off on this one and just solder some wires uh, where I need them. And while it worked, uh, this thing looks like crap. And finally, if you want to add an LED on the board for hard drive activity, you can do that. If you want to add a place for a remote LED, you can do that. If you don't care, you don't have to do either. One of the things I use during this build process that I wouldn't call essential, but if you can afford it, I think you want one. This is the XGQ Pro uh, EEPROM programmer, but it is so much more than an EEPROM programmer. I mentioned that all these chips came from AliExpress, and uh, you know I had some failures of some chips out of the box. I think a lot of these things, they call them new, but they're actually just pulled off of old boards. So with this thing, all you have to do is put the chip in, pull the lever, set up the software, tell it what kind of chip you want to test, hit a button, and in like a second, it will tell you if the chip is good or bad. And you can save a lot of time, especially if you're not socketing these things. And this chip here is an EEPROM, and you can program it from a floppy or from another hard drive, but it is way easier to program if you can just drop it in this thing and hit a button. So I'll have a link to this thing in the description. And if you do anything with logic chips or EEPROMs, you want to have one of these things worth every penny of the 50 or 60 bucks they cost. So let's talk a little bit about how I actually use these cards. So um, I have these things, which are little compact flash to IDE things. You can see you just put a little cable there and you can run this to the back of the computer and access your compact flash card from there. Um, I didn't buy the brackets for these things yet. I probably will, but you don't really need them, but I'd kind of like to have them. The, the one downside of this solution versus the other ones I showed you at the beginning of the video is that this will actually take up two slots. Now, usually on most cases, you have some slot covers that don't actually have slots behind them. So normally you can put this in a real slot and run this somewhere else. Uh, but that is one downside. So I either use it that way, or if I want a one slot solution, I have this little thing, which I can actually just flip it over here and plug it straight in the back. And this will allow me to hook a compact flash card uh, straight to this thing. And I can actually jumper something right here if I want to allow this board to power this so I don't actually need to use that power connector. Obviously, you can hook up a good old-fashioned IDE hard drive, which is a lot more modern than the ones that I have back there. But um, you're still going to have some of the noise and power usage and unreliability of older hard drives. And last but not least, I have this from another video. Um, I use this a lot during testing, but this is one of those SD cards to IDE adapters. So if you'd rather use a more modern SD card, or they even make a micro SD card version of this, uh, you can use that and mount this a lot of different places to have access. So uh, while you do lose some of the flexibility of just plugging the thing in the back and accessing the card straight from the same slot, you do get a lot of other flexibility by being able to mount this card somewhere else and remote it. You can put it in the front if that's easier. All kinds of different options. So this board is legit. Now, one of the machines that makes this thing ideal for this style of XTID is that this slot right here is called slot eight, and it uh, does not work with most expansion cards. Now you can configure the XTID to work on this slot, but it uh, requires some changes that could make it not work with other machines. So rather than do that, I'm just gonna cover that slot up with the compact flash card here and the controller here. Uh, I've already connected the power. So we're gonna go ahead and put this down here and then I'm gonna use one of those old fashioned original screws. And then we're gonna mount the card itself, making sure that the IDE port is to the back. Now, cable management was a lot trickier back in the day and I'm not gonna put a lot of effort into that right now while I'm still rearranging some stuff. I wanna make sure I don't put too much pressure on any of the cables or cards, uh, but we are just gonna go ahead and tuck this down out of the way, just make sure it clears the top of the case. We'll tuck this down and we'll give the whole thing a test. Just so you can see, that's what the back looks like right now at this stage of the game. And we're gonna pop the compact flash card in so we can plug this thing in and try it out. Well, there you have it. Not only does the card work, but it performs really, really well in that old machine. Now, I've got awesome plans for that machine that I'm not quite ready to tell you about now, but I will be finishing up that build. And uh, yeah, I wanna thank PCBWay for sponsoring this. If you are interested in getting these boards, I've got a nice and easy link for you in the description to get the exact boards that I got. You can get them without the gold if you want. I've got the list of materials used and all that kind of stuff in the description and on pcbway.com. So, hey, thanks for watching and have a great day.